We're now live. Welcome to our Cardi par party. It's Thursday and the big news, the epic news, did you feel the rumblings? It's not even that it's even confirmed, but the potential that Dan Snyder would sell the Washington football team is causing shockwaves throughout the region because people said that it would never happen. So I, yesterday afternoon, uh, I was on, um, just scrolling my phone and just happened to open up Twitter and saw JP Finley, our NBC Sports Washington uh, team insider. And he retweeted the Forbes article and I froze for a second. <laughs> I was like, I, I had to make sure I was reading it right because they've been adamant that there's no truth to the fact that they're gonna, they're not gonna sell, they're not gonna sell. And not even two weeks ago, not even two weeks there was ago. a statement saying the Snyders would not sell. Let's all team up and buy the, yeah. Uh, yeah, I got maybe, I know Caroline says we can only hope. I have maybe, I mean, I used to like have season tickets, you know? I would maybe put down a, a good little amount of money if we were doing like a Green Bay Packers situation where we we're all gonna pull together our money. But yeah. This is why the situation is so big. People wanna know why is this so impactful? Because also the team is under investigation, not just for misconduct on the team, but mm -hmm. financial issues as well. Mm -hmm. And so the team is under fire. Then the team did a whole rebranding, right? They changed the name. They Fight said they song. were, right, it hired new people. They said they were going to change even the structure of the cheerleaders, which caused some controversy. Mm -hmm. And this rebranding process, in the midst of it, the team never, the double downs said we're not gonna yeah. sell. Well, then the crazy thing is, um, I mean, they haven't even announced the mascot. That's supposed to happen at the end of the year, the right. mascot. But if you're getting in a new owner, I mean, right. Okay, so who do y'all think? Um, oh, hey, Milad. Hi. Momo. Drive safe. Hey, y'all, good morning. Okay, so who do y'all think? So I think it was Bloomberg or the Wall Street Journal or somebody says there are four interested parties so far that have expressed interest. We know one of them, obviously, um, Jeff Bezos. Yes. He owns Amazon. He's got a lot of money. Rest. And um, the Washington Post. So And he has a big house in D.C. So he's mm. got ties to the region right and we know that he wants he, to join that club of billionaire he, owners and he has the money yeah <laughs> he but, has the money but what what does he know about sports or running a team or i mean i guess is it just have, have to hire rich? the right people well you could have to hire the right people somebody said obama obama's not buying this team <laughs> right, right. Well, byron allen was a big name yes byron allen was a big name and i know a lot of people want ted leonsis who's the owner of the wizards and the capitals to buy it and the mystics yeah um but he's already trying to put in a bid to buy the nationals Nats, right. from the learners that's a lot we of money two of our teams are right. for sale right now in this city and the other thing about the the Commanders, it is a storied franchise. Yes. This is not just any old team. Right. We've suffered, and we are two long-suffering hometown girls who love this team, yeah. but we've lost fans. People aren't going to the stadium to watch games. People, because of the name and other reasons, mm -hmm. have really moved away from this mm -hmm. team, mm -hmm. and now it's an opportunity for people to say, I'm going to come back now. Mm -hmm. It really impacts people's view of how they want to then be a part of this new era if it happens. We're also jumping the gun because it could it hasn't happened. They said they're exploring it. They hired um, Bank, Bank of America, of America. Yeah. to explore the possibilities of what this could mean. Yeah, you know, but I have to, between all the investigations and then, you know, you see people go to these games and they're literally holding signs that say sell the team and then they're putting them on TV. You, at some point, you have to sit at home and just say like, okay, let's get rid of it then. Right. <laughs> if this many people don't want us, you know. Uh, and we, yeah. had, we had Pat Collins out asking people, mm -hmm. fans. Mm -hmm. And listen, we, all, we know it's just a sampling, but there is not one person, mm -hmm. not a one, mm -hmm. in the last several years who said, you know what, we really want Dan Snyder to keep this team. Yeah. I have not heard one comment. If there's someone out there who believes Dan Snyder is the best man for the job and should keep the team, let us know. Because yeah. I haven't heard anyone say keep it. Sunday will be brutal. Oh. Yeah, so um, what's his name? Kirk Cousins comes right. back to town Sunday. Minnesota Vikings. The Vikings. They're six commanders. and one. Six and one. You know, but the commanders have won three in a row. And, and we beat the Packers, and no one thought we could beat yeah, the Packers. They've, um, you know, I think 
I feel bad for the players because obviously they're just here to do a job and so much of what they do on the field impacts how everybody feels, but they have to try to block all this out and, and just they, yeah. win on Sunday. And that's what they said. They want to ride this momentum. This is such an interesting prospect because I do think it will change a lot. I think it will change a lot in terms of the landscape mm -hmm. of what's happening in Washington. Uh, people don't believe that. Some people, I should say, don't think we are, are a big sports town. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to loyal fans, we have, you stop watching the games. Yeah, no, I don't. I, I, I've watched maybe a total of 15 minutes this, this season so far. Um, okay, so I have another question for y'all. New ownership possibility aside, you know, whatever happens with that, FedEx Field, the lease runs out in, you know, a few couple years. Mm -hmm. Where do you think they should go next, you know? I am a fan of them coming back to D.C. If you want to go RFK to the FedEx, oh, yeah, RFK site. Um, hey, look, Sonia's here. Oh, hey, Sonia. Sonia. Hey, girl. Um, yeah, I want them back in the city. Mm -hmm. I know there are some city council um, members in D.C. who don't want that for specific reasons, traffic and such, quality of life, but... A lot of major cities have stadiums in their city limits. I, I, I think it's just, it's the best for the region if they're in D.C. You know, FedEx Field is a bore to get to. It's very, very difficult. There is no accessible metro. You have to take walk metro, a mile. walk a mile, or take a shuttle, or get on a bus. Uh, it's it's a pain in the neck. Parking is very expensive if, mm -hmm. you, if you can even get parking. Yeah. A lot of people just stop going because of the hassle of mm -hmm. getting to FedEx Field. Uh, Angela also Brooks, the Prince George's County Executive, has, and has said, "Yeah, Governor Largo. Go, yep, they wanted him to stay in Maryland. They're saying Largo should be the next destination. I don't know um, if, who lives in Largo. Anybody live in Largo around there? I mean, mm -hmm. I guess they could build Largo up. I know there's a Largo Town Center metro station, but you know, I guess, uh, yeah, their option. And Virginia has weighed in." But for a while, they were saying Ashburn would be the location. They were practicing near there. Um, oh. oh, somebody said they can't see on. Hey, oh. Ann is here. I know oh, she's okay. just she's like well, doing the half well. face. Uh, yeah, the Prince William County. I'm sorry, Woodbridge. I love our friends in Prince George's. I mean, Prince William County. Woodbridge is too far to go it's down far. 95 with the traffic. Even there's no metro. Mm -hmm. I think the idea why RFK or the that space is so appealing is the accessibility to Metro. That's why Nats Park is so easy. Mm -hmm. You get off on Metro mm -hmm. and make, it makes it so much easier to get there. For concerts is too, mm -hmm. by the way, because you know when you have those big stadium concerts, we're talking about Beyonce coming mm. and we're yeah. wondering if she would come to FedEx Field and we don't know mm -hmm. officially. So I think one of the issues people have said is that she, does she want to go play or go perform at that particular venue because it's so hard for her fans to get to. Yeah. Taylor Swift is not coming to our region for her tour she, next summer. I also we need a nice like she's stadium. going to change her mind. So they have to come to D.C. It's D.C. It's, I don't know. I don't know, folks. Mm -hmm. If it was in Woodbridge, you would have to leave for the game Saturday morning. Exactly. <laughs> and who has the time? Mm -hmm. Especially if you don't know they're going to win. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Tay Tay did snub us. I don't know what's going on with her, but Rihanna and Beyonce better not snub the DMV. All the concerts we have to, all the concerts we have to attend, all the money we have to save. So for us, Beyonce is our priority. So yes. we have to save a lot of money, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. And so we're going to see how much money is left over for the other concerts. At least that's how I'm seeing it right yes. now. Yes. Yes. After you see Beyonce, you'll see what we're talking about because it's worth the money. Mm -hmm. It's worth the money. She mm -hmm. puts on a show. Yes, that's right. what I'm asking for for Christmas. Exactly. Only areas. Only White Flint Mall. Yeah. There is a metro there, though, but is that space big enough? Somebody said Stan Largo. So somebody mentioned the area around St. Elizabeth's, which mm -hmm. is, you know, southeast D.C., um, where they're, they're, they are building up over there. Uh, the new, where the Mystics play, the sports and entertainment com oh, yeah. complex really is down there. a nice place. I haven't spent enough time around there to know the area in terms of where you could put a stadium, a football stadium. But, mm -hmm. you know, hey, somebody call uh, Mayor Bowser. I don't know. Oh, Amazon is going there. Oh, 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 okay. Okay, well, if Amazon's going there. Oh, hey, LP Drinks DC, Lauren Paler, O'Brien, who, okay, spoiler alert, if you are watching or you should be watching the new Netflix uh, reality show, uh, Drink Masters. Oh, yes. And Lauren is in the competition. I, you know, spoiler alert, because it's already out there, all the episodes are posted. She won. Woo! Yes, the best mixologist in the country so is right here in D.C. Amazing. Um, you have to check it out. 
She does amazing. The cocktails she makes are incredible. And, and what she said about representing yes. people of color in that space, which mm -hmm. is hasn't been done, and mm -hmm. doing it on a national stage, and making the delicious drinks. I'm here for all of that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you watch it, and it's a tough competition. <laughs> it was like... Top chef for mixologists. I mean, they so were. So stressful. Yeah. And I'm telling you, especially for the pandemic, people have been learning how to make a really good mixed drink. It's not as easy as the as it seems. Yeah. You know, portions have to be right. The flavors have to be right. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm not a big like, mixed drink person because yeah. I'm a lightweight and it's a little bit strong. Yeah. But I'm learning. I'm yeah, yeah. learning. I know. I mean, it's this is more than just your, uh, you know, Jack and Diet Coke or you know rum rum and Coke situation. They do incredible stuff. Check that out on Netflix if you can. Um, but yeah, just whew, a lot, lot going on. Right. This morning there was a lot of reaction, trying to figure out what's gonna happen, who are the contenders. And you're right, I forgot we haven't even chosen a mascot. Haven't chosen a mascot. What were the it was gonna be a dog or an animal? Yeah, or a pig. I think the dog and the pig were the we finalists. We were saying the hog would make sense because yeah. it's a throwback, a hog and a commander's yeah. type of uniform would make sense, a throwback to the, you know, the original team it's just the, history. The drama, mm -hmm. the drama. Oh my gosh. Okay, well, we just had to jump on to talk about that uh, this morning. And so... Thanks for joining <sighs> us. Yeah. Let us know what you think about who should own the team, where it should go, mm -hmm. and what the mascot should be. Yeah, and tune into Mood News for Midday because we're going to have much more on this story because it's not going anywhere. And then a really interesting um, News for investigation. Our producer's on. Hi, Michael. Hey, hey, Michael. Um, Julie Carey and Drew Wilder on Northern Virginia oh, yeah. team have been putting in work with other uh, news organizations, including the Post and Associated Press. Uh, they sued Virginia Governor Glenn Youngkin to release the emails from that parent tip line he set up earlier this year after he was um, inaugurated. And they found some interesting stuff um, in those emails, what was there and what wasn't there. Drew will have much more on that coming up at 11 o'clock on midday. And you can also check that out at um, NBCWashington.com. So... It was a really eye-opening, it was deep dive into what parents are concerned about. It's not necessarily what you think. What you think, yeah. So um, we're going to log off and drink our breakfast, our green juice, and eat our potato chips. Balance, <laughs> folks. <laughs> and listen. Breakfast time. Does anyone have... Can I just complain about my children for one second? Okay. Okay. So I like Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. This is a dark chocolate one, if you can find it. Because we had emerged from the pandemic, and yeah. we don't have... We didn't have that many trick-or-treaters over the course of the last couple of years, I decided to buy full-size candy bars this mm -hmm, time, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, yeah. So I love the children. I love when they dress up. I bought a box of 30. Okay. Full-size candy bars from Costco. Full-size. Yeah. 30. Yeah. Put it away. Yeah. In the cabinet. I took it out for Halloween. Opened the box. There were nine left. Nine. These jokers ate, I'm trying to do the quick one, 21 candy bars, full-size and left nine for the little children. Mm. I No home training. No hot. home training in the gang house. No I home training. At, and then, you know, Robert said, I only ate one. I swear. Because <laughs> I looked at him and he said, I only ate one. I had a Twix and that was it. But they ate all that candy. And then my oldest, he joked, he's like, I think I had two a day for a week. I said, please, See? what is happening? And by the time I remember to buy candy, all that was left was like that Nashy's, nasty Hershey's thing that has like the... Um, the yellow ones, oh. Mr. Good Bar oh. and Hershey's, the oh. raggedy candy. Mm. Oh my the gosh. The raggedy candy. I saw something on Twitter. <laughs> Can I just tell you? I have to do a cut and I saw something on Twitter that said, don't let, just don't let anyone pick the candy because it was a bowl full of, you know, the little mints wrapped up and Ugh. the butterscotch wrapped up. And who gives these to the kids? People That's who shop late. you skip. Exactly. I know. All right. Thanks, okay. Guys. Bye y'all. We'll see you um, hopefully tomorrow. There'll be some more news to talk about, <laughs> but um, it's, it's time for breakfast. Right, so. Right. In we'll my see you tomorrow. dark chocolate Reese's peanut butter cup. 4 a.m. Okay. Bye. Bye. The eggs. <laughs> <laughs> the eggs.